Variety is the spice of life. Ask any recovery unit. You ditch them, we fix them is the Remy slogan, and out they come. Well, all those came out, why not this one? This Churchill is off the road and must be remobilized for action. We've pulled them out of bogs, ditches and craters. Now here's one bellied in a gully. It's a nasty packet of trouble and calls for slightly different treatment. But what goes in must come out, so here goes. Now this is the man who starts the ball rolling, the recovery NCO. We'll join in the reconnaissance and see what sort of a job he's got to tackle. At a glance, it can be seen that the Churchill is well and truly bellied along its entire length on the edge of a gully. In addition, the near side track is right off and trailing away behind. This was the cause of all the trouble. What about the near side bogies? They're well down in the soil, which being soft, should have prevented damage to the wheels and spindles. This soft soil means that the use of jacks in the gully is out of the question. When the suspension is dug in like this, it's not practicable to haul the casualty out nose or rear first. The bogies would only be pulled further into the bank. Well, that gives some idea of the conditions of the ground and the casualty. But what about its track? It's been thrown clear of the tank, but has it been damaged? There's a broken plate at the end nearest the tank. This is what caused the track to be thrown off. But as the Churchill carries spares, that's just a replacement job. Are there any more breakages like that? A quick look along the track soon shows that the rest is all right. Now, what about the offside of the casualty? Well, this track is off its bogies. Still, it's not broken, and that's about all you can say for it. This definitely decides the NCO against pulling the tank forward or backward. If he did, the track would come right off. From this initial reconnaissance, four important things have been learnt. First, that the tank is bellied with its near side bogies well down in the gully. Second, that the near side track is right off with a broken plate. Third, that the off side track is off its bogies. Finally, the ground conditions in the gully are such that any attempt at jacking would result in a lot of cursing and that's about all. Now, how does the NCO intend to tackle the job? That, of course, depends on the equipment he's brought. Well, there's the vehicle. Do you recognize it? Yes, it's the good old Scammell breakdown tractor. Your casualty may be as stubborn as a mule, but with a capable crew, there are few jobs the Scammell can't take in its stride. With the motorcyclist escort already posted as sentry, the crew soon get their Scammell from the temporary harbor. You'll have noticed that they have fitted overall chains, a wise precaution before venturing on soft ground. What about its equipment? Well, the vehicle carries its normal complement, plus a few additional items, but more about that in a moment. All arms are stowed in racks on the scammel. This would be the rallying point if the sentry gave the alarm. Now, how is the job going to be tackled? At present, there's only one man who knows this, and that's the NCO. And if he's wise, he'll give his crew a good idea of what's to be done. So, NCOs, always bring your crews into the picture. Now, you remember, the NCO decided that he could neither jack this tank up nor pull it out nose or rear first. What, then, is his plan? This diagram shows how, at the moment, the Churchill lies bellied. It must be got clear of the gully, so the NCO decides to tackle it in this way. It can't be lifted bodily, but the near side can be raised until the bogies are out of the gully. It's now on its offside track, and once up, it will be pulled so that it slides on its offside track until the tank is well clear of the gully and on even ground. Here it will be tilted until the near side bogies are raised off the ground, ready for the cast off track to be pulled underneath. That's all very nice, but how's it going to be done? Well, the NCO has decided to lay down a five to one tackle. The casualty end will then look like this, so that they'll need gun planks, two 15 ton snatch blocks, two plate type shackles, a 12 ton shackle, 
and a Mark IV hawser. These then are the items to be offloaded at the casualty end. This crew, by the way, is part of a Remy airborne unit. They literally jump to their work. Here's the equipment laid out. A Mark IV hawser, gun planks, skidding, 20 and 12 ton shackles, and two 15 ton snatch blocks. Now the first job is laying the gun planks along which the tank will slide during winching. Soil must be removed to get the ends under the track. Leaving two men to do that, the NCO and the driver can position the tractor for pulling the near side track out of the gully. This must be done before the tractor takes up its final recovery position. There's a job for everybody here, as there should be in all recovery work. Now, where's the NCO going to put the track? The track, which is half in and half out of the gully, has to be moved. First, out of the gully and onto level ground. Then it is pulled towards the tank so that it is in alignment with the near side bogies in the position they will be after the tank has been recovered from the gully. Winching out this track is straightforward. The winch rope is simply run out and shackled direct to the end of the track. Manhandling this track would be an impossible job with a crew of only four, but of course it's easy meat for the scammel. Out comes its entire three tons, like a giant snake. Now the winch rope is unshackled and run out towards the casualty. You'll notice that this crew have their own combined operation hauling the track out, and at the same time preparing the tank for recovery. And that's the way all crews should work. While the NCO is down this end, how are those diggers getting on? They've dug and positioned five gun planks already, and are digging a place for the sixth. Good work. Anyway, let's get this track aligned with the tank's bogies. Remember the diagram? Now, here's a good wheeze that'll save a lot of trouble. Use the casualty as a holdfast. A GS snatch block is unloaded from the tractor and carried to the tank where it is shackled to the offside towing eye. The cable is placed into the snatch block and the snatch secured. The tank thus makes an excellent holdfast. By now, along the off side of the tank, all gun planks will have been positioned. They are evenly spaced along the length of the track and inserted well under to prevent the track digging in and to enable it to start riding along the planks. The next job for these two men is to attach the ends of the Mark IV hawser to the front and rear of the tank. They take the front end first and attach it to the single towing eye. Quick release shackles on the Mark IV hawser make this rapid and easy. Now, how are the others getting on with the track? By the simple method of attaching that GS snatch block to the tank, passing the cable round it, the track is winched into its final position. It wasn't even necessary to move the scammel. How's that for a good line? Now you remember that one end of the Mark IV hawser has been shackled to the front towing eye of the tank. The other end is taken to the rear, where it is attached to the near side towing eye. To lengthen this end of the hawser, the offside shackle is used as an additional link. 
Remember this, Swither Churchill. There are two rear towing eyes, one on either side, but in the front, only one in the center. This difference in position is partially adjusted by this additional shackle on the rear rope, which has the effect of lengthening it, and by skidding under the front rope, thus shortening it. So they have compensated for the different towing eye positions. The line of pull is thus brought central, a very important point. Now you see the result. Here is the apex in dead center of the tank. Without the skidding and extra shackle, this is where it would have been, much too far to the rear, so the tank would have slewed during winching. Equally important is the use of protective skidding to prevent damaging the tank by lifting the hawsers clear of the sand guards and other soft parts of the tank. We want to pull it out, not apart. Now to get cranking on the snatch blocks. With the apex central, one 15-ton snatch block is shackled direct to it with a 20-ton plate-type shackle. How's the job going? Well, the track's lined up, shackling is proceeding, and the tractor is free to take up its winching position, ready to tackle the real job. As a five-to-one tackle is going to be laid down, the tractor must not be more than about 75 feet from the casualty. There wouldn't be sufficient winch rope, and it doesn't stretch. Once in position, down must go the skid pans. The tractor must be anchored for winching a job of this size. Now, what equipment do we need at this tractor end? Well, this is how the completed layout will look. First, there's a four-in-line holdfast anchoring a GS snatch block. In front of this is laid a three-in-line holdfast attached to a 15-ton snatch block. This equipment is offloaded. We want a set of four holdfasts and pins together with a GS snatch block at the rear of the layout. To the front, a set of three holdfasts and a 15-ton snatch block. Both sets of holdfasts are shackled to their respective snatch blocks and held with one pin only until they've been lined up, after which the remaining pins will be driven in. You can see that the holdfasts have been laid just far enough away from the tractor to ensure that the winch rope will not foul it during winching. By the way, what's happening at the casualty end? The other two men are completing shackling the two 15-ton snatch blocks. The work goes on simultaneously because equipment was unloaded where it was needed. This crew use their heads and save their legs. And now for the final stage of the five to one, hauling out the winch rope. So with the winch brake off and applied manpower, out it comes. Now it's no use having a winch rope all wound out and nowhere to go. We'll follow its journey with the aid of both picture and diagram. Now watch this, out it comes from the tractor and then to the 15 ton snatch block nearest the tank. It is passed round the snatch block. From here, the cable runs back to the tractor end, to the GS snatch block, which incidentally is drawn over size to show the cable lines more distinctly. This is the snatch block attached to the foreign line holdfast. Again, the cable is placed in the snatch block and run back towards the casualty. This time, it runs to the second 15-ton snatch block. Once more, the winch rope is returned towards the tractor end to the block anchored by the three in line holdfast. This 15 ton snatch block is the last bend in the road, for the winch rope returns finally towards the casualty.
Here it is shackled with a 12-ton shackle to the eye of the last snatch block. And so the five to one layout is completed with, as you can see, each holdfast held by one pin only. The required pull, including frictional loss, is approximately 35 tons. Our tractor can give us only eight tons. So that's why a five to one tackle is needed. With this tackle, the casualty can be winched slowly. On a broadside recovery like this, Winch control is most important. By using a five to one, we've geared down so that for every five feet of cable winched in, the tank will move only one foot. It's like using a gearbox. The greater the load or gradient, the lower the gear necessary. Is that layout quite clear now? Like to have one last lingering look at it? It's known as a simple five to one because the one winch rope is used throughout the entire layout. Being a five to one, it must have five lines or returns of cable running back from the casualty. Here they are, one to the tractor. Two anchored by the GS snatch block shackled to four holdfasts. And the other two returns to the 15-ton snatch block, shackled to three holdfasts. This is a fine layout, but has it been correctly lined up? A good guide is the rear towing hook. If the winch rope leaves the rollers directly over the hook, then your tractor has been correctly positioned. This lining up is vital, and to a good crew, is as natural as lining up for pay parade. With everything ready for winching, the crew have no need to cross their fingers when the tackle takes the strain. To check all skidding and shackling is an essential precaution before winching. Once the casualty is moving, we don't want a hitch when it's halfway out. It wouldn't be too easy to get in moving again. With the ready and winch in, given and relayed, the tackle takes the strain. It's gently that does it. Under no circumstances, snatch it. Soon, the nearside bogies that were embedded in the gully are lifted. You remember, by lifting the bogies, the Churchill will be able to slide along the skidding. As its offside track starts sliding along the gun planks, these move with it until the weight is squarely on them. It's like the broadside launching of a ship, except that this one's coming out and not going in. The gun planks still preventing the offside track from digging in, the tank continues to slide well clear of the gully. Sliding stops only when, having ridden right off the gun planks, the offside track digs in. Now the continued winching pulls up the near side. The tank has been hauled onto level ground and the near side bogies have been lifted well clear, ready for hauling the cast off track underneath. Before moving the track, there's that broken plate to be replaced. Spares are carried on the side of the tank. This is just a question of removing the old plate and replacing it with the new. We can't use the tractor winch for hauling the track. It has a full-time job holding up the tank. So a portable winch is positioned and its cable run out along and under the near side bogies.
Its eye is taken to the track end and attached with a track pin. With the cable thus attached, the portable winch is soon in operation and the track moves on its slow but sure way. A crowbar keeps the moving track in dead line with the bogies. The front idler sprocket is slacked off in preparation for joining the track. When the end of the track reaches the front bogey, winching stops and the cable is unshackled. This is its final position when it is ready for the tank to be lowered by the winch brake so that its bogies are dropped onto the track. There's an alternative method of doing this, so we'll go back to where the tank was held up and the track was still at its rear. Now this time, jacks are used. The tank being held by the layout only until the jacks are positioned, one at the rear and one at the front. These are pumped until they take the weight of the tank. When they're well up, the handles are removed and the layout is slackened off. The near side of the tank is now solely supported by jacks, which in turn are squarely supported on skidding. With the 5 to 1 tackle dismantled, the tractor can now be moved and used to haul the cast off track under those bogies. The tractor is positioned in front of the tank and in line with the near side bogies. The winch rope is hauled out under the bogies and attached to the track. This time you'll notice how much faster the track is winched. This method could not, of course, be used if the ground were too soft to support the jacks and skidding. Here it is once more under the front bogey, ready for the jacks to lower the tank onto it. Now the winch rope is passed over the front and rear sprockets and shackled to the other end of the track. At this point, one man must jump in the driver's seat to free the near side sprocket. Now the top run of the track can be hauled into position. You can see the ease with which this heavy track is hauled over the rear sprocket, along the track guides and out over the front idler. With all slack picked up at the rear, the halt is given. The track is now made or rejoined. The track pin is punched through and secured by anvils and keepers. When the idler sprocket is adjusted to tension the track, it is locked and the sprocket guard replaced and screwed down. That's all right for the near side track, but what about the off side? Nice work, Corporal. This track, digging into the ground during winching, was pushed back onto its bogies. Now then, what have we learned from this recovery? First, to recover a casualty broadside using a five to one tackle. Second, to support the tank with a layout while its track is positioned with a portable winch. 
Third, to support the tank with jacks while its track is positioned with a tractor winch. A good crew always has a last look round before the tank, a casualty no longer, is handed over to its crew. Then, of course, there's their own equipment to be stowed in readiness for the next job. And so the Remy crew is off. They've done a good job and shown us how recovery equipment should be used. The Churchill, now completely recovered, is ready for action again. <laughs>